Hello everyone, I am Ganesh Shandiya from Plant Science Simplified. Today we will be discussing one of the very important topic in mycology that is mycelial organization. To understand the mycelial organization in a proper way, we have to first understand basic structure of thallus. So if we look at any fungus, we will come across a very large flow footing body, then only we will recognize the fungi is present there. But actually that is only a tip of the iceberg. The fungal mycelia, that is the basic plant structure or the basic organization of the fungi will be beneath the ground or beneath the substratum in the form of mycelium. And this particular mycelium, it is again a microscopic mass of these cells or filamentous structures which we call them as hyphae. So mycelium basically it is the vegetative part consisting of a mass of hypha. We can observe filamentous structures like this. Hyphae are the long branching filamentous structures which are seen in fungi. So they are filamentous in nature. We can see the long thread like structure and also they have branched in a proper manner, predefined manner. And to understand more about hypha, because it is very important in its presence, we have to understand the nature of hypha based on compartmentalization. What do we mean by compartmentalization here? Let us explore that. So if you consider an array of hypha which are seen in the fungi, Basically, there is a type which is called as aseptate hypha, where we won't see any cross walls or the lengthy filament is not broken or it is not uh, compartmentalized with the presence of cross walls. Whereas, there are other types which are called as septate hypha, which are having cross walls, distinct cross walls will be present and usually the primitive fungi will be having this aseptate hypha whereas the true eumycota fungi will be having septate fungi, Sept, sorry, sorry, septate hypha. We can study nature of hypha based on nucleus also number of nuclei present in a single hypha or single compartment and its genetic makeup will help us to categorize the nature of hypha into different categories the sinocytic condition is the first one where a fungal hyphae is not septate so it is called as aseptate but at the same time, it is composed of many nuclei, more than two nuclei are present in the fungal uh, hyphae. Then it is called as sinocytic, multinucleated condition. Hyphae is another type where we can see the hypha is septate. We can see the hypha is septate. In individual septum, the individual compartment which is made by this septum will have a single nucleus. So that condition, if uh, fungi of our interest is of that kind, it is called as monokaryotic fungi. It comes to the Another type where we can see again the hypha is septate, but here we can see more than one nuclei, basically two nuclei will be present in this type of hyphae and then it is called as dikaryotic hypha. So it is also a type of multinucleate only, but the multinucleate condition will be confined to two nuclei, so it is called as dikaryotic hypha. The 
hyphen are seen in the multinuclear condition is individual compartment which is made by the presence of septa will have more than two nuclei within it. Here one more thing we have to notice that and here we can see there is a color code which is given to two different nuclei to represent that the DNA or the nuclei which are present in these compartments are genetically different. So they are called as heterokaryotic my hyphen. They are called as hyphen or mycelium containing heterokaryotic nature nuclei and this is where there is no distinction is called as homokaryotic hyphen and it can be seen both in dikaryotic and multinucleate fungi. Let us learn about the proper mycelia organizations in the fungi. Fungi being a unique kingdom which share so many characters with allied kingdoms. So some of the characters of the fungi are near to plant uh, king, uh, planting, some of the characters are very similar to animalia, even some of the characters are very much uh, nearer to the prokaryotes. So it have a variety of uh, uh, micellar organizations within it because of its basic body structures. So among them, there are certain very important types what we are going to study and basically the tissue is not there in fungi, whatever the tissue level organization we say, it is a pseudo tissue level organization, true tissue level organization is not there in fungi, uh, but it appears for, uh, morphologically it appears like that. So basically the uh, simple micellar aggregations are called as plectin chymatous aggregations in fungi and among them there are two different usually two different kind of plectin chyma can be seen and one among them is prosenchyma and prosenchyma is loose rewoven tissue of hyphae and this particular hyphae do not lose its identity. So as we have discussed, uh, hyphae run parallel to one another as a result and they are loosely woven as a result they do not lose their identity. That means we can identify a, a single hypha in a proper manner even though it is clumsy, even though it is together. And usually those things are composed of elongated cells. So this is the characteristic feature of prosenchyma tissue which is seen in the fungi. Here tissue is used only for the sake of convenience, not exactly. It is just like aggregation of cell where the division of labor is not stringently followed as in the tissue level organization in other biological organization systems. The second very important aspect to know about the diversity of micellar organization is pseudoparenchyma. Parenchyma we have heard in the case of uh, higher plants. Like that. That's why it is given the name pseudoparenchyma. So usually the fruiting bodies of higher fungi, when they uh, papillus or those regions, they will be made up of this type of compact interwoven hyphal masses where we can see if we take the cross section of those uh, stem like structures which are seen, we can see that the hyphae are arranged in a similar manner which we can Mm, correlate to the higher plants that is the parenchymatous tissues. The wall of hyphae gets fused and they lose their individuality. So many of the walls are not proper. So it is not single hyphae. It may be a aggregation of so many hyphae that will give rise to these kind of structures. Uh, 
the very important characteristic micellar organization which is seen in the fungi is rhizomorph as the name suggests the rhizo name suggests the root and morph uh, suggests the appearance so root like appearing plant bodies so you may think this these are the uh, fungal myceliums those who have uh, run through the uh, any other plants it is not that the uh, only fungal hyphae they will aggregate to form a uh, uh, compactly uh, interwoven intertwining uh, strands of a root that is resembles a root and this is a very much characteristic features of basidiomycetes especially ectomycorrhizal fungi and all they uh, exhibit this kind of rhizomorphs in their presence in ergot like fungi which can cause diseases to the plants so they have to have uh, different types of life cycles they have to have alternative hosts all those things so during that time what happens they may have to face different types of biotic and abiotic stresses to complete their life cycles so to cope up with those situations the fungal hyphae will undergo certain types of modifications through which it can live intact during that particular period of unfavorable conditions so here it rests like in a hard dark resting body and contains a fungal hyphal mass and here there are two types of masses can be seen in the hyphae and the white cottony globose masses will appear in the outer surface whereas inner surface will have a black mass of hyphae which is storing nutrition within them and during that particular unfavorable condition that nutritional reservoir which is there in the fungi will be utilized for its survival this is how the fungi will have different adaptations different morphological mycellar organizations